is Dingzo here. I'm doing an article for Tweak Town on the new Golf Town CPU. For this article I'll be using a Gigabyte UD7 motherboard. As we're going to be using liquid nitrogen in this article, we need to make sure that the motherboard is nicely sealed up so any condensation or moisture build up on the board will not cause a short. There's many different ways we can do that. Some use Vaseline, you can use conformal coating, you can use a motherboard or a circuit board lacquer, you could use nail polish, and the list goes on. For this one here I'm using a motherboard lacquer or very very similar to a conformal coating. What we want to do first, as you can see here with this motherboard, I've already pre-taped up the RAM slots, the PCIe and the socket to make sure we don't get any of this lacquer in there which could stop contact with the actual components. It's pretty straightforward, we simply get our conformal coating and once we've taped it off we simply spray it on. Here you can see just a nice even coverage, very very straightforward. I prefer not to cover up the power circuits. I'll actually clean those off with a cotton board after I finish spraying as I prefer to get a nice even coating in between them to make sure that little legs won't get a short. Very very easy. Now that we've done the front side of the motherboard we'll simply turn that motherboard over nice and sticky and we'll repeat the same process on the back. Again, I prefer not to cover up the power circuits, I'll simply clean those off later with a cotton bud and the remover for the slacker. Again, just a nice, easy, even coating spray on the back of the board, just so we can seal it all up, so any moisture build up will not actually cause a short. Very, very straightforward and easy, and a lot faster than using something like nail polish. Too easy. Now that we've left it to dry for a little while, I've started to remove the insulation tape that was holding back the conformal coating from getting to the sockets. Pretty straightforward. Just simply grab and peel off all the insulation tape to leave you with the nice clean areas that you've covered off. Very, very straightforward. Just go through the motherboard. And just simply peel these items, all the insulation, straight off, nice and easy like that. Now that we've got the motherboard all cleaned up from the conformal coating, I've got the heat sinks all put back on. Now we have to fill in around the socket area to make sure that we get a nice airtight seal for when we mount the pot. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. Uh, the two most popular is using foam or using eraser. For this article I'm going to be using eraser and all I do is I just fill in little bits at a time with eraser and just keep going until the socket area itself is all filled up. Just put, just keep filling in the gaps. By doing this we'll also make it airtight so again we'll have no issues with condensation forming on any little circuits that could give us issues while we're benching in and around that minus 150 mark. Now that we've got the whole area covered in eraser I we'll simply add on a piece of tissue paper to absorb any moisture that may get through. A layer of foam insulation. Add a wee squeeze of thermal compound. Test mount the pot. I'll just lift it to check to make sure I got a good spread, which I did. So that'll be perfect.
Paint the hole down. And there we have it. Pots mounted. For my needs, I use a 50 litre pressurised drawer. I simply use a thermos, open up the release valve, and fill it up. Some people in a previous post of mine had pointed out that the fact that I'm not wearing gloves and that I should be. When you're using liquid nitrogen, if it simply splashes onto an open surface of skin, no, it will not freeze you like you see in the movies. Your limbs will not freeze and fall off. Here you can see I just splash over my hands. And yes, my hand still works. It hasn't frozen solid like you would have seen in the movies. What you do want to do is to avoid sticking your finger inside a thermos or any other type of canister where the liquid nitrogen can simply not escape or move away from the heat of your body. The easiest way to demonstrate that is if I hold my thermos like this and I simply dunk a, a flower inside the thermos. It effectively freezes the flower. When I pull it out, the flower will shatter. Though again, if you simply pour it over your skin, on open skin, you're fine. If I was to do something silly like try to cup and hold the liquid nitrogen in my hand, yes, that would freeze and cause a lot of damage. Now that we've booted into Windows, we can have a look at overclocking the Golftown CPU on this Gigabyte UD7 motherboard. We'll utilize the Gigabyte software EasyTune 6. I'll simply open it up on the screen. I understand that you probably won't be able to make out all the details, but I'm sure you'll believe me. What we're gonna do is on the fly multiplier adjustment. We simply go into the advanced tab, click on ratio. We've booted in with a 27 multiplier on all cores and threads. We are simply going to adjust that up to 31 to give us a nice, easy and safe 5.4 GHz. I'm going to run 3 Mark Vantage at very, very safe speeds just for the demonstration of this video. So we'll use 5.4 GHz on the CPU and some safe clocks on the graphics card. For that, we we'll use MSI's Afterburner Overclocking Tool. We'll open that up. We'll set a nice easy 1.6 volts, 1380 on the core. There we go. And 1360 on the memory. I'm sure that sounds safe. Apply, close that. I'll just continue to pull this graphics card down to temperature. For this test we're going to run the CPU at approximately minus 130 and the graphics card at minus 90. The software. Turn these feature tests off so we don't require them. Continue to pull this down to temp. While we're waiting for 3D Mark Varnish to load, as well as the temperatures get into the right range, we'll have a wee look at what we're running. Obviously, we've already talked about the Golf Town CPU and that we're running a Gigabyte X58 UD7 motherboard. In conjunction with that, we're using an MSI Reference 5870 graphics card. This graphics card, you'll see here that we've actually mounted a Kingpin Cooling Tech 9 3.0 GPU unit. On the Golf Town, we've got another Kingpin Cooling pot, which is the F1 Extreme. We're also running Corsair 2000 CAS7 GT memory, and powering all this is an Antec TPQ 1200 OC edition power supply. 
Here we go, we're almost ready to start the benchmark. We've got a temperature on the CPU currently of minus 122. I will cool that down a little bit more. And the graphics card's at minus 91. So we'll hold it thereabouts. This particular graphics card doesn't like much temperature shifting when it's sub-zero. So you'll see I pour quite regularly just to keep it within about four degrees. If I get any more fluctuation from that, I get corruptions and generally a crash. The CPU on the other hand will be perfectly fine. Now some would have you believe that liquid nitrogen is only really useful for benching. See, I think that's a little short-sighted. Because quite frankly, if you're a gamer, I don't know, 5.7 gigahertz on a Golf Town CPU, 1360 by 1360 on a 5870, seems pretty appealing to me. Hey, why not? <laughs> 